Good morning and welcome to Screen Junkies Universe. We're very excited today because we have some incredibly special guests with us. Dan Merle is here, I'm Hello. Roth Cornett, Daniel Radford, who we love, but even more amazing and impressive than that, we have the co-directors of the upcoming I Feel Pretty, Mark Silverstein Hello. and Abby Cohn. Thank you so much for being with us Thank today. You. Thank you. It's great to be here. We wanted to start this out by talking about something we talk about quite a bit around here, which is the survival of the mid-range $30 million comedy in the age of the onslaught of superhero blockbusters. There's a Deadpool trailer out today. Yeah. People are talking okay. because of ticket pre-sales. And you don't see that kind of campaign for a movie not that is not a superhero movie anymore. No. You guys had to move your release date due to the Avengers, yes? Yes. Yes. We did. We did, it yeah. Was a, it, was a, it was a scary day. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah. literally felt like you were we under were, a tidal wave. We feeling. actually had moved two months earlier, not based on any but, tentpole, based on the fact that they, after our test screening, people were just excited about getting the movie. And then we moved it a week based on the Avengers. When they moved, yeah. we moved. Yeah. yeah. So they moved to your day. They moved like Ooh. on top of us. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. sat on top of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the week before, we were ready to go, so it was just right. a we week. We were like, it's cool, guys. You got it. And it's fine. You kind of <laughs> know if you're Whatever. releasing a movie that's not one of those movies between April and September, that's you're gonna you're gonna bump into something. So yeah. it, it it is what it is. But it is it's difficult. I we was we did all our press in New York, and I, we were flying back uh, through JFK, and like. The American Terminal, when you go down the escalator and then you have to go back up an escalator, and it's like 200 yards and it's moving sidewalks and it's like an Avengers ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. What do you yeah. mean? It's like an adventure, Avengers-sponsored hallway in JFK. Really? And it's full, just characters up and down and you're on this walking side. It feels like Disneyland. You're on a walk <laughs> and music's play the Avengers music's playing. Wow. Oh, wow. It's, it's crazy. Insane. <laughs> Well, and I was like, now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is, you know, our entire advertising budget in this little hallway at JFK, whatever this partnership with American Airlines is. It was crazy. What kind of conversations do you have about how you can um, uniquely market in that space or find a way to be heard and seen? It's tough. I mean, it's they tough. I mean, I think for this particularly, um, there was such confidence and goodwill coming out of our test screenings that the word of mouth screening was a big part. And we, um, the studio held upwards of 300 word of mouth screenings before mm. this tomorrow's release. Um, just because we got, uh, we just got such good feelings, good reports, everything coming out of those screenings was really positive. So I think that is, I don't, it is a way of doing sort of more of a grassroots campaign for something that feels like it hits an emotional nerve with people, you know? Yeah. And then I think, you know, there's the on the social media component, which I feel mm -hmm. like is, you know, I think it works. It's hard to measure what works and what doesn't work and what penetrates. I mean, like, print media, I don't know if that, like, weirdly, because they moved it up so quickly, we missed all of the long lead press Mm -hmm. stuff but I don't I don't know if that matters anymore like magazine covers mm -hmm. are, are people buying that stuff it's I think it's a weird time people are definitely like trying to figure out how to reach an audience and make sure people know what's happening and and it's sort of like this kind of release for this size of movie is is not happening much anymore there's a hard R releases those comedies tend to get released like that but then we're having this sort of Netflix renaissance of movies of this size that don't get the promotional push, but people have to find it on their own. Well, you mentioned word of mouth, and that's kind of something that we've seen in a way back in December. You had, everyone's like, Star Wars is going to make all the money. And then you had two movies, I think, you had Greatest Showman and Jumanji were two that <laughs> opened a little, you know, not unimpressively, but a yeah. little lower, but blew up based yeah. on word of mm -hmm. mouth. Like, yeah. when you're looking... At, you know, you see these test screening results come back. Like, is there a component where you kind of just have to go, part of this is just going to have to be organic? Let get it out there. And yeah. I think that is going to be a big part of this. And I think maybe for these movies, that opening isn't as important as it was before. Like, mm -hmm. I think you, ha like, hopefully they stay in theaters. And you see Jumanji, and I saw it because I have kids, and like, it's so fun. And so it was fun. great. And you're right. like, oh, no wonder people really want to see this movie because mm -hmm. people went out to see it and told people to see it. And I think that's hopefully 
maybe a way forward is just a little more time for things to grow and a little less importance on like this was a huge hit or a flop on the first weekend it's like yeah getting it out there and letting it sort of organically How grow. it used to work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or movies yeah. would run for like six months exactly. in the theater. Yeah. Actually, kudos to our the studio that's releasing it, STX. I feel like they really, really have confidence in what the movie says and what it is. And I feel like they are willing to let people talk about it and let it grow. So Well, I think that was also part of the move up to April, which was we were supposed to be June 29th. And then you're just dealing with like, literal theater count like Mm -hmm. is there enough Mm -hmm. how long can you keep something in the theaters when every weekend is another insane movie coming in and taking up every theater so they knew that there would be a little more room to to run out from this date as opposed to that date so it's um do you think about this in terms of your careers moving forward as well in terms of do you think about okay do we want to sort of align with the Netflix or do we want to do we want to be there's such an open space in superhero movies now because we've seen so many of them right. I have jokingly said uh, we need to see the Scarlet Witch Vision rom-com but like do you pay attention to these things do you watch the films we, I mean, we unfortunately we, don't we and don't <laughs> we keep I mean, we keep doing the kind of movies we love doing I mean the fact that we were able to n- not only write and direct this movie, but something that uh, wasn't based on anything. This was not a sequel. This was not a comic book. This was not based on anything. The, the fact that, I mean, the fact that we were able to do that in this climate where really conventional wisdom is, n- no, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we've had luck just being true to the kind of movie we want to make and not spending so much time worrying about where the marketplace is going, don't yeah. you think? And I also just don't have the, the back ground or knowledge to really do one of those movies. I never read a comic book or really don't, I, I, it would take so much <laughs> literal <laughs> research for me to catch up on what's happening Yeah. that even though that sounds like a good idea and it sounds like a sensibility that could, you know, would be filtered through our lens and that would be interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure that's, that's something we ever considered, but, but it is, the Netflix thing is, is a way to go. I mean, I feel like that's, that's a definitely like the future of like the mid, you know, $10 million movie mm-hmm. is going to live on that, that mm-hmm. place. For whatever reason, like horror can still live in theaters mm-hmm. and it's a communal experience that people love to have. But it, unfortunately, I do think comedies are too. Yeah, I love laughing with the group. And things play yeah. so much better yeah. in a room. Mm-hmm. It's the only way that it works. I do. I'm a. I do stand up, and like there is nothing like being in a crowd of people yeah. all laughing mm-hmm. at the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it doesn't. Watching the same stand up set as a special in in the room is you, you could find completely different things funny. And I right. feel like that energy, unfortunately, is not going to. Things are going to be lost if we if we funnel off all of that these kind of movies to uh, to the streaming services because it's just not it's not the same we just so you guys know I'm keeping an eye on our uh, chat as well Billy's keeping an eye on the chat and he'll let me know if there are questions um, from Mark and Abby and in the meantime we have plenty to talk about (laughs) Um, you know the other interesting thing to me about this film and I've been thinking a lot about it in the last week was I I I saw it the other night and quite enjoyed it, and I hadn't read anything about it just because, you know, life has been whatever. And then I sort of looked it up and I went, whoa, there's a bit of controversy, but no one's seen it yet. Yes. And that's kind of the media landscape that we find ourselves in. <laughs> yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about the challenges and or was it in a way, did it get attention to the movie? Did that kind of I mean, through? that's always a theory. Like, no, there's no bad press, right? It doesn't feel that way, definitely, when you're on the other side of it. It feels like there is bad press. But, yeah, I mean, awareness of a movie is a hurdle. So you're definitely getting that awareness out there, whether it's positive or negative. But like you said, that the only controversial comments we had were people who had seen a 15-second trailer and were then supposing and just assuming what then would happen and sort of responding to their own assumptions of the movie, which, I mean, that is frustrating because those kind of comments weren't things that we have ever seen out of any of these screenings. So yeah, I think um, I think it's frustrating because we want people to judge the movie on the movie, not on their ideas based on whatever their history is or whatever their movie-going choices are. Yeah, I mean, I think there was also that, which is historically... You could see this. We love. We were excited to make this movie because 
it's it is a bit of a high wire act and it could be made in a way that's not really great mm -hmm. so when you boil down that premise to a trailer and then you take into account like the history of Hollywood and how they've made movies I can see jumping to conclusions like that because you know Hollywood has been a little tone deaf to certain issues for sure that was the reason we wanted to make it and sort of the premise gave us the opportunity to sort of mess around with it and have fun with what those expectations would be. Unfortunately, you know, people you can't get that in the trailer. You can't get that in the trailer. <laughs> right, and yeah. it is because um, this is something that like I've, you know, um, I am plus size, I proudly call myself fat um, before anyone else can. And um, <laughs> it's, what, it becomes one of those things of um, when you see the trailer and you are so used to the way that these issues yeah. are usually presented. Um, I watched, this is a weird side note, but I watched WWE and they recently did an angle that was about bullying and because one of the, the um, women wrestlers is plus size. And what winds up happening is for a lot of us, it's, well, I don't wake up every day and go, I'm plus size. I wake up every day and go, I have deadlines to meet. When am I going to clean exactly. my apartment? Yeah. And so that I think is what um, a lot of the plus size community when they see like that is what they're they're bringing to it so mm -hmm. it is now that the movie is out and there have been and I've seen you know things from um, plus size models and vloggers who have said like this isn't what we, you know if you were going into it thinking it was going to be this it is going to be it is not going to be that right? yeah yeah for sure yeah and that's I mean that's just sort of the function of advertising which is unfortunate it right. is a, it is a, a distillation of something that can't that and if you're trying to do something that has a little bit you know, more nuance to it. it can, you can't really put that, A, on the internet. There's no nuance on Twitter. <laughs> no. Twitter is not where you go for nuance. No, no you can't. No. There's no you can't nuance do nuance in, in 15 seconds. No. no. And that's, and it's, it, it is, it is what it is, honestly. And I, and I don't, you know, begrudge anybody their opinions. But it's like, for me, it's like. But I would like I, them to see the, I mean, the movie itself, we stand behind and are so proud of the messaging of the movie too, not just the humor. We're really proud of it. And, and I would like people to see that, that um, the, the message, the movie really has a heart. You yeah. Know? When, you're, when you're doing a movie, I, I, I was wondering, when you're making a comedy, which is the most subjective thing in the yeah. world, um, how much of it, because I know how, myself and I would constantly be in my own head about like are they gonna like this is this funny do I find it do I am I the only one that finds it funny well, <laughs> what if they don't like it but well these people and like do you just have to shut that out and just you, and just trust your own instincts you and do. say you really do well you do for sure while you're making it yeah for sure and when you're editing it but then you get to a point where there's test screenings and then you do have to be open Mm -hmm. to what an audience is telling you. Right, and the audience, I mean, we would bring in groups of friends and that's such a gift to us because yeah, of course, when we're shooting it, we think these jokes are gonna work and some of them don't. And it's, a, it's we actually love to be like, okay, no, okay, yes, and hear it and, and but have e no qualms about cutting stuff that doesn't work. Right, but even so, there's still some that are like, like are sort of neither here nor there and you're like, I love it, we're keeping it. Like, mm -hmm. you do keep stuff for yourself that an audience isn't necessarily responding to because you feel like that's funny or someone like in five years watching yeah. it on TV will be like, oh, I love that joke. <laughs> right. So yeah. Yeah, and sometimes some jokes are for you. And, yeah, that's, and that right. needs to be you okay. You have to keep Absolutely. them, yeah, There's for sure. There's a couple in the movie, they don't get traditional laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> but, um, but we enjoy them. Yeah, and we feel like people inside are like, mm. Right. Yeah. We call exactly. those one percent. We, we, yeah. we, we, we write on his trailer, so we, we'll call them one percenters. Yeah. We're like, I can that's think a one percent. I can but think of two one that. percenters that are in there, and I still <laughs> do a personal smile when I hear them, and it makes me happy. But it should work on multiple levels too, and you want different levels of laughs. Mm -hmm. That yeah. I think it's it's not all, not that you could really control it, but I do think it's nice to to, to layer it. Yeah. We've talked a little bit sort of about the intentions of the film as compared <clears throat> to the perceptions, but let's talk about what those intentions actually are and what the film is about, um, where it really has something to say that I find incredibly relatable um, in terms of being insecure and, and que finding myself questioning, why do I feel insecure? Right. And ought I feel insecure? I feel like I shouldn't, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm and doing pretty well. This, yeah. yeah, matrix of self-assessment, um, and, and that's what Amy's character is really reflecting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think, and we tried to do this, obviously, mainly with Amy's character, but with everybody in the mm -hmm. movie who 
um, has something that they are insecure about. You can be the head of a company and gorgeous and feel still, still feel insecure. You can be a guy who's doing well but feel insecure about your masculinity. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be looks. It can be based on status. And we really try to do that with everybody. And in the end, we're really trying to say, um, you're okay the way you are. And you don't need to change anything about yourself. What we all need to do is love ourselves a little bit more and have confidence in who we really are, not in always trying to change what we put out there to the world because what you are is enough. And I think for us that's a message that is that feels pretty universal mm -hmm. to no matter what your feelings are, whatever you feel like you're less than. Right. And part of the the initial concept of the movie wasn't just that she perceives a change in herself herself it was that sh we never see what that is and that I was super that important choice. It was because really important. because it's not it, it's <laughs> who cares it, who, who cares? cares and, and we everyone undermine has our something own different. message by right. if we had shown that and mm -hmm. then we're saying well this is the standard of beauty we don't want to show you mm -hmm. the standard of beauty because that is not what this movie is about mm -hmm. you know yeah i love that choice you know i kept waiting for the moment that the reveal and mm -hmm. then when you just still see amy yes, yes. um i thought that was oh i guess it's a spoiler it's not. You can't spoil it's it. It's in the trailer. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. in the trailer. Yeah. And it's, it, I and it's really, a comedy. Yeah. And it's a, a comedy, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that was a, we really fought, <laughs> fought for that moment. Oh, and was we that fought a fight? For that. It was I, a. It was I mean, a certainly when we started sending the script out to producers, people said, "Well, what do you see?" And in the script, we had it in capital letters, like "Nothing changes, mm -hmm. no still, she looks the same." I mean, all in caps. It was pretty clear. But even going out to producers that we didn't even work with, but people assumed again because but, of tr the tropes of this kind of movie that we're going to see something, and it was definitely something that we had to kind of hang on to forcefully is like we're, ne we're never gonna yeah. do that and then secondarily like not once we were set with our team it's more like a lot of times when you're making a movie it's not it's just about options and sometimes people are like we know you don't want it and you don't think you're gonna need it but maybe just in case mm -hmm. we shoot this stuff for safety and we were like we're not even giving anybody the option for this like this is how it's gonna be and Weirdly had a lot we were of confidence. very bold first time directors. <laughs> yeah. But Amy also was like, no way. Yes. Like, yeah. this is oh, from the, the whole very point beginning. of the movie. I don't it's even, just me. Yeah. yeah, she never considered doing that either. And then once we shot the scene where she wakes up and looks in the mirror, like, then everyone was like, oh, okay. Like, it works. Yeah. We yeah. knew when she, yeah. that she sells it so well and in so that scene. And Sashir in that scene sells it so well as our eyes saying, like, oh, no, she's nothing is changing here. You know, right. so between the two of them, I think it was pretty... The lock was pretty clear on what was going on. Yeah. Um, working with Amy, I'm curious, how collaborative was that? How sort of did she did she bring new elements to the script, or was it was it pretty much what was on the page? I mean, it was very collaborative, but it was definitely like I mean the the movie, the scenes, the structure is exactly as the scene sh as the movie she got basically yeah. to read like a year ago. But we had you know, a good week, like all day, every day, like three days here and three days in New York of just going through the script and, and, and. You're just sitting with her page, going through page by page and, and shooting out jokes. And obviously she's a genius and she has really good ideas. Um, and we took them. Yeah. <laughs> so that was great to be able to infuse a lot of her humor in there. And, but she also. Right. But she's a producer on the film too. So right. she was definitely like involved in every decision. And yeah. she said from the very beginning, if we started shooting tomorrow and we shot the script as is, the way I just read it, I'm good to go. I'm happy with the script. So it was really always a process of seeing how much more we could bring to it, but we all felt confident in if we go today and it's what's here, we're all really happy. Yeah. Um, I don't want to dominate if you guys chime <laughs> in, please. Um, I'm also sort of curious about working in partnership as directors. Yeah. Do you trade scenes do you no. trade tasks or how does it how not does it really. really work no we i mean we just did it was a partnership we did everything together like we write and so and writing the script together is definitely like i, I it would be really interesting to direct something as a partnership that we didn't write because then you may come to it with a different interpretation of what's on the page mm -hmm. but we had already built the movie together. Right, it felt almost like cheating because we knew it so well, yeah. better than any of the, you know, we had lived and breathed these characters and knew the tone and knew the cadence of these voices. And so that, and, I think, as a first time director, was really, uh, gave me comfort, you know? Right. And, and despite, you know, 
the sort of prevalence of that like auteur theory of movie making, it's a super collaborative process mm -hmm. regardless. I mean, unless you're Steven Soderbergh and you're shooting and <laughs> editing and <laughs> doing the score and literally doing right. everything yourself. Right. It's you're collaborating with somebody to begin with. So. And we want the benefit of the 20 years of experience of every department head that we have. That can only make this movie better. So I felt like right. we were very open to everybody's great ideas and right. taking them. And so it was just us, you know, collaborating with that, with the DP and, and just trying to find ways to, we wrote the story and we knew what that was and just trying to find ways to transfer that story to the DP and be like, this is the visual story we need to tell or to the production designer and this is how we want to do it via the set. So it was just taking the idea we had together and just making it, you know, giving it to other people and seeing what they came back with. Have you decided already what your strategy for the weekend is? Is it, uh, is it the media blackout? Are you refreshing I'm going to Coachella, deadline? What's so. the, and I'm, the, oh, there yeah, you go. I'm full wait, media blackout. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to Coachella. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get that Beyonce week, too. I can't wait. Yeah. Is it going to change? We don't know. We don't know. I'll be on the ground reporting. Um, no, so that is pretty much a media blackout because yeah. the cell service is so bad out there. I mean, yeah. the fact that we have already heard that Oprah loves it, I feel yeah. like I, the weekend. Oh, what else she? do you need? Yeah. I, you I, literally don't need no, anything. No, no, yeah. that's it. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I really, I really, I, I did feel like, oh, God, about the weekend and nervous and whatever. And once I heard that, it was just like a smooth chai latte for my soul. <laughs> and I was just, I was calmed and comforted in the arms of Oprah's comments. Yes. <laughs> so that's that, all I need. That is truly all any of us. Please right. love me, Oprah, is what I wake up every morning and think. Um, we do have a few questions okay. from our audience. Um, this goes in line with what we were talking about earlier, that this is a movie that about not so much how the world perceives you, about how you perceive yourself. Yeah. Um, insecurity about appearances especially is affected a lot by our culture and Hollywood. Um, how do you deal with that weird dichotomy? And are you afraid to be a part of the problem? Hmm. Uh, afraid to be well, a part of the problem? Well, I mean, yes. I mean, it's definitely like, I feel like, in every aspect of movie making at this point, people are trying to be, and, and we definitely have always been, but I think the industry's catching up, just more conscientious in the way people are treated, definitely. It's a, it's a, it's a weird situation that Hollywood is, a, is a, sort of held out as a litmus test to the way the world is working, because it's an industry that, it, it, there's no parallel to it. It's crazy. There's so many people coming to Hollywood who want to be involved and willing to do anything. And the power dynamics are so skewed that it's, it really takes a lot of, of conscious thought to just be respectful of people and respectful of, of just who they are and what they bring to the table and that sort of, you know, I do think people are really trying to be more mindful of that stuff and I casting and, 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 and also in hiring department heads and hiring who you're, who you're having on your Sets, I definitely think it's something that's changing. And that's I don't changing. know if it, if it coincides with us having kids. We both have, Mark has two daughters. I have a daughter and a son. Um, but there, we definitely, or at least I don't want to speak for you, I definitely feel that when we look at a project, I want to do something that I'm proud to put out in the world, you know? And that has, I think, become um, a bigger part of who, what we stand for and what we want to do, which is why for our first directing project, we wanted it to be not just a comedy, but a comedy that has something positive to say, and f especially for women and young girls, but for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that is an important part yeah. of, you know, we get sent scripts to rewrite or ideas to do that, that we do now take a look at, is this really what we want to not only spend a year of our lives doing, but what we want to put out into the world as part of culture or mm -hmm. not? Um, I mean, I see that in this film. That that message was from Talk. Um, and then Raul asks for Mark and Abby, um, what were the inspirations for this story uh, and sort of some of your inspirations in terms of comedy? I mean, I think we made a, when we were trying to think of a type of movie to, that we wanted to make, we were definitely thinking about movies we grew up on, like Big and Tootsie, Working Girl, that mm -hmm. that kind of vibe and like, <laughs> yeah, why those movies aren't being made anymore? Right. And like what? Why aren't those movies being made anymore? I think it's. I, I think it's really like, it's it's a shame. I mean, I think it's a function and we, of. We understood. Look, we took an idea 
you know, a uh, switcheroo magic movie with no magic. We understood, we wanted to twist it. We wanted to have fun with those tropes and take that scene that's always in that movie of like, I'll prove to you guys that it's still me, but like, I, they know it's still her. Why are you being so weird? Do you know, we, we definitely weren't going to do a s straight, we were inspired by, but we weren't trying to do that movie over again. We were trying to take what we all loved about those and turn it on its ear a little bit. Right, but still, even tonally, movies that played a little more in the drama comedy area was, was definitely something we wanted to do that isn't around much anymore. And I think that's just a function of like, what's been successful and I think comedies have gone just harder mm. and they've hard our, our comedies are mm. the way they go and then it's really hard to like take a step out of that and do like a dramatic scene and yeah there too. I think so my I think, theory is that yeah once you go super hard R it's really hard tonally to mesh that with real um, honest emotion, you know? Oh. And so you have these separate poles and how can you do that? It does, it feels like two different movies. I think when you push so hard for the raunchy or the hard R factor, you right. know? And, and the, the PG-13 comedies aren't being made as much anymore. And that's, that's where this lives, which is great, I think. Um, but I think those comedies were made for an older audience. Mm -hmm. The like Tootsie was an uh, was R, but it was for adults. Like mm -hmm. they weren't carried, car they weren't worried about thirteen year old boys going to see well, Tootsie. Back then, you could make an <laughs> R movie, and it didn't. Now, if you put an R on it, you've got to push it so hard to to make it worth your while to have an R. Do you know? That's so interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because they want they want younger people in those movies mm -hmm. if if they can get them there, and if no one cared with Tootsie, like 17 and older, great, like that's fine. Right. But now it's like not worth, we could have gone, we didn't, that, the tone, we didn't want that tone, but we could have gone five or 10% raunchier and had more language that we had to like trim out, but then it's not worth the R. You have to go like 40% more to make it worth going there. Do you think that part of it is, and not even just within the industry as far as like marketing, but I mean, awards and stuff like, Tom Hanks was nominated for an Oscar for Big. Yeah, uh, Tootsie was like it wasn't it wasn't I like a comedy hit. It was a hit, and it seems like now comedies like comedies are over here, and comic book movies are over here, and action are movies here. are over here. Yeah, and then and you have Oscar movies. Yes. Like, it's like, I think no, about it, that all the time with movies like Big yeah. and Tootsie. Yeah, I think that I mean obviously is a real shift. Um, I mean, I'm already working on my Oscar wardrobe for this, but <laughs> for other movies, I think they're really nervous. Yeah, um, but I do think, I think it is still marketing. I think that's all it is. I think marketing has been so studied and broken down into, you know, what niches you're trying to get with what movies you're making that it's actually just made the movies only cater to those niches as opposed to, I'm just going to make a, a really great movie. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I feel like you're not getting... I mean, so happy and so excited that Amy would, you know, wants to do these kind of movies, but like the young Tom Hanks's aren't doing these kind of movies. The mm -hmm. young the Dustin Hoffman's not gonna do a Tootsie. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's the shame. It's like comedians do the comedies and there are like funny actors that could probably be like killing in this sort of genre that that don't go there yet. Yeah. And I feel like maybe they will. That'd be great. Hmm. That is so, I've never really thought about it that yeah. way. Um, and in terms of pushing that R mm -hmm. and what you need to do. What, why? Bodily fluids, I guess. That's yeah. where. Why was Tootsie an R? Remind me. Like, what's. Some Adult language. themes. Yeah. There's some like sex stuff, I guess. Yeah. Sure. That's where it gets. We have a lot looser definition of adult themes. Yeah, but, but, but there also <laughs> yes, used to yes. be boobs in PG-13 movies. Like it sure. was, yeah. it was very the MPA. The line was, is very. <laughs> it's all over the place. Yeah. It's yeah. zigzaggy uh -huh. line. We were yeah. talking about that documentary about that the other day. Yeah. 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 Um, that must be a whole other element. Well, as you've been discussing for yeah. you guys. Um, final thoughts from everyone. Um, I, just one quick question um, about Rory Scovel. Oh my gosh. Um, he, <laughs> how amazing is full, he? Full disclosure, he is a butt of mine. Yeah. Um, so oh, yes. Um, so one, how amazing is he in the movie? And two, tell him I said hi. We will do that. <laughs> Be done. <laughs> um, he is so great in this movie, and and <clears throat> it's not just us things. I mean, people fall in love with him because he just. I mean. When we meet, first of all, not everybody knows Rory like you and I do. Mm -hmm. And so we love the idea that when you meet him, you don't know he's going to be 
the romantic lead of this movie? Normally you do, because that's the name that you've come to see the movie for. So right. you know right. that that person who you've just met in the laundromat is going to be the lead of this movie. So there's such an amazing surprise element, not just be, that he becomes the romantic interest, but that he is so incredibly lovable. He does such a good job of sort of being our surrogate eyes as we fall in love with Amy and her confidence. Um, and their chemistry is so good. Yeah. yeah, and you can see that in the trailer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to be uh, that version of Amy where she feels great about herself and just <laughs> does not care. Yes, yes. we all do. I really we all do. Want to be that person? I am. I get insecure about my own insecurities. It's a thing, right. you guys. But the great thing is, it's all you can do it. It's all in your mind. Do you know what I mean? Like we all have the tools to push a little farther to that every day, which is so we don't have to change anything. So that's I think what makes it a hopeful. Idea. I think it is a very hopeful idea. I hope that people go out um, and see it. It'll open the door to all kinds of conversations, which is a really positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a part of engaging in that conversation, in my mind, truly is that you need to see the thing first. <laughs> Thank you um, for saying that. And, and, and then develop, whatever your response is, that's your response. That's OK. That's yes. great. You know? That's yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, and the, the, a real conversation can evolve from there. And that's what I think that a movie that is also just really fun to watch um, and is a genre that we don't see a lot these days. Yeah. Um, that's what this movie does. And you can go see it for yourself tomorrow, tonight. Screening. This tonight. is what I don't understand. They're like understand 420. The it's, op it's open on <laughs> it's open on Friday. And then like it starts at eight o'clock tonight. Yeah. 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 But they won't say the nineteenth? Yeah. I don't understand it's what the that weirdest is. Thing. It's the arms race, because it used to be that it would <laughs> premiere at midnight. On the but, 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 then all, but, but then yeah. LA but then LA was like well if it's midnight on the East Coast it's nine o'clock here so oh, then LA that? started playing it at nine o'clock oh. because they and but then but then the East Coast was like well then we're gonna do it at nine o'clock we're gonna it, do it at seven eventually it's gonna be like Monday <laughs> yeah but is it totally. but is it not everywhere on Thursday is I'm that so why they don't say some Thursday some places do and some places yeah. don't yeah mm. I think that they don't want to like, confuse people and exactly. say Thursday and people show up and be like wait because it's not all day on Thursday it's like Thursday night so weird if you're printing all these posters and stuff you should just decide on a date exactly. It yeah. feels weird to make it so arbitrary. It does seem confusing, in it, but I think you're right, Dan. It becomes the same thing that we've seen happen with the blockbuster season, that now it's the year. It's all year. Yeah. Yeah. It's all year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it'll probably just be Sunday night. It's playing right now, <laughs> somewhere right in the world. Somewhere you can see this film, but it is definitely available tomorrow on April 20th, and you should definitely check it out. Thank you guys so much Thank for you. being Thank you. Thank so you, guys, fun. for joining us. Thank you for supporting our Women in Film event. Um, continued support is very much appreciated and go support some women in film yes. this weekend yes. yeah thank you thank you thank you <laughs> Bye.